you wince at the brightness of the flames about you. The sounds of battle are loud and close, as if buried within your skull. With effort, your face turns skyward. The night breeze brushes against your skin, causing you to smile. You feel a strange calm as you observe the broken body of a man you once called your prince. His eyes, blue and intense, stare into yours. The man smiles, soft and horrible. Don't you see? We have... We have already won. Blood pulses from the corner of the prince's lips. His voice is liquid. You must tell the king. Eyes closed now. He's breathing labored. The broken man continues. Tell the king that she is dead. The prince opens his eyes for the last time, staring into yours. The brilliant blue slowly fades to the color of dull ash. The world is dark and still beneath your lidded eyes. Your head aches and your mouth is dry and wooden. You lie there, too sore to move. The prince's voice still echoing from across some distant void. Suddenly you feel the touch of human hands. They scurry like rats across your body and you feel a tugging as they reach your finger. The breeze fills with a muttered curse and the scrape of metal. Still haunted by the events of last night, you keep a wary eye on Prince Ahmed's corpse. As the battle had raged around you, he said you were to tell the king that she is dead. seems cont Prince Ahmed's glad
There, amidst the smoking wreckage of this battlefield, lie the corpses of two women. Is one of them the she the prince referred to? What of the countless other women strewn about you? You breathe a heavy sigh. Somewhere, some woman is dead, and you must tell the king. seems content to watch you search through the belongings of your fallen comrades. She hugs herself in the cold air, apparently too weary from her previous efforts to join you. The pass opens before you, full of danger and possibility. You make a mental checklist of your scant belongings, hoping you have enough for whatever may lay ahead. These cliffs have the stench of death about them, and a part of you hopes you'll never return to them. Fight! <laughs> 
quiet sanctity seems to grace this well-tended cemetery, permeating it like the chill mountain mists. Lichens crust some of the older headstones, lending them a dash of pale green color. This is holy ground, and a part of you feels hesitant to disturb it. <laughs> This headstone is not yet fully engraved. Stone chips lie scattered about the floor, intermingling with the arcane symbols traced in sand. Dark tendrils of energy emerge from the ground, whipping about in a deadly dance. against her pale green flesh. The night hag stares at something unseen upon the table. Suddenly, she's there before you, her white eyes piercing deep into your soul. So it's you the fate sent back to me, is it? They could have done worse, I suppose. Negative energy streams through a tiny fissure. The night hag nods approvingly. The leak knows you now, and I will be able to use it to help you return to the land of the living. If you find more in your travels, be sure to let them taste you as well.
you are surprised to find yourself standing on solid ground again. You still feel as if you are floating. Far below you, you can hear the flow of water and distant screams. The depths of Stygia, you presume. Though you cannot see her, you can hear the night hag's voice inside your head. You stand on the Isle of the Dead. Lost souls will occasionally come to this island as it lies at the border of my domain. They will be unable to pass through the gates you see before you, but you may speak with them if you wish. Some of these lost souls may still cling to virtue, petitioning you to perform some noble deed. But death changes the hearts of men. Many are but vengeful spirits, intent on wreaking havoc in the world. Remember, they cannot hurt you in this place, nor can you hurt them. You are safe here in my care. dwarf bears a horrible gash down his left side. His entrails dangle from the broken bridge into the vast darkness below. The uniform he wears is all too familiar to you. and wispy. Leave me be. The night hag's voice, soft and confident, returns to you. This is a tree of life. I planted it here long ago, and it is what gives me my power in this place. Its roots descend all the way to the sticks below. You need only touch its branches and it will grant you passage from this island back over the river Styx. You feel the air about you shift and change. It feels electric somehow. Through the door before you lies the Filcher's Labyrinth. It is a part of the barrier I spoke of earlier, a final bulwark against lost souls. The Filchers are mindless denizens of the barrier. They pose no threat to you save their insatiable curiosity and greed. If they draw close to you, they will attempt to steal your belongings. You may attempt to fight them off or retrieve your belongings from their treasure piles. If you destroy the Filchers, however, more will arrive. You are lucky. Only one Filcher is present now. Word of your passage through the barrier will spread, however, and more will be waiting for you each time you traverse this path. Be aware, too, that the barrier is a constantly shifting place. What the filters steal from you today may be long gone when next you return. Now pass through the door and enter the barrier. I will be waiting for you at the end of the labyrinth. The night hag stands before you, wreathed in unearthly mists. 
Behind her, a shattered bridge crumbles slowly into the void. Sad smile on her pale green face, the night hag watches you approach. She waits for you to speak, her delicate fingers brushing back and forth across a knot in the table's wooden surface. You recognize this pennant, the starkness of the black on white. You can still remember them from the battlefield, their streaming tatters stained with red. Perhaps someone you once knew this is buried here. This headstone seems newly mounted, its text hastily chiseled. The words seem strange to you, as if you are somehow viewing them out of context. Come back to me, my love. This battle is not ended. Much care and attention went into the carving of this stone. The images of fruits and harvests hearken to some distant land. Mother, if only I could bring you back. I pray they do not make you suffer.